All right, the very first thing that you're going to need to create these bubble pictures, if you want to photograph it as a film, is to get an aluminum wire and just bend it into like a nice square like that. Now this stuff is called weather stripping. It's also known as rubber foam. I'm cutting that wall off. It's basically a wall that kind of holds moisture inside of the sponge and the bubble stuff will um, absorb into the sponge and then it will constantly recharge the bubble film. If you spiral it around like the way you see here, it's just going to hold more bubble juice all in there. And now the physical camera setup that I'm using, you can see that I have two flashes on the table there. If you don't have two flashes, you can use one flash. There's a soft box on the left side of this picture. It's just to illuminate the bubble film so you can actually focus on it with your camera. The light from the flashes are going to bounce off this white piece of cardboard that's actually attached around the lens. And last but not least, the bubble film container, the aluminum square with the foam wrapped around it, that's being held up by a light stand and there is a reflector holder attached to the light stand. Here's that wireless remote trigger I was talking about. It's this little thing on top of the camera here. This just sends a signal to the flashes so whenever you push the shutter button it's going to take a flash. The one I'm using is called the RF602. Now we're going to have to get up close to the bubble so what type of lens are we going to need on our camera? Well the best thing you could do is get an actual macro lens because this offers the most image quality. You can also use a standard 50 millimeter lens or maybe an 18 to 55 millimeter lens and use different filters and different things on them. You can use a magnification filter, which just is just like putting a magnifying glass up to your camera lens. You can also use a lens reverser adapter ring, which puts your lens backwards on your camera. You could also use extension tubes. These, it's another cheap solution. You just put them between your camera and your camera lens and it, all it does is it extends the lens further away from your camera sensor. But if you're an image quality freak, you're definitely going to want to use a macro lens because that's just, by far, it's just going to give you the best image quality. I don't have a macro lens. I'm using either my 18 to 55 lens or my 50 millimeter lens, which are very cheap and inexpensive standard lenses. And I've just been using extension tubes and the lens reverser adapter ring. Now the bubble solution, um, it's pretty easy. You just go to the store, you buy a big bottle of bubbles, just regular bubble mix, and then you go to either a pharmacy or an online store and you get some pure glycerin. Now all the glycerin does is it just makes the liquid thicker so that the bubbles last longer. So you're going to want 80% regular bubble mix and 20% glycerin. You're just going to put it in a big container like I have right here. You're going to lift it up into the aluminum frame and then uh, just place it below the aluminum frame and let the bubble mix drip back into it. And you will start to see colors forming near the top of the aluminum frame and then start falling down to the bottom. And then eventually the colors are just going to get so good looking that it's just going to pop and you're going to have to start it over again into the sponge tape and I'll just refill it. And I usually like to photograph the things up at the very top because that's where the colors are really saturated. So I just focus on the frame itself and then once that is in focus I switch the camera to manual focus and it all gets down to trial and error. You can also do photograph bubbles of the bubble mix. <laughs> Put your bubble mix in a container uh, blow inside of it with a straw slowly lift the straw out and it will create a bubble and you're going to want to put a soft box directly above the bubble if you have a soft box it takes a flash that's great but you're also going to have to light it up somehow so you can actually focus on it and see what you're doing okay so post-processing uh, the bubble pictures can be pretty beneficial if you want to get the colors uh, just more colorful. Now the first thing I like to do is just click the auto button and see what that does. I don't really like what that did so I'm just going to go back to the default. 
Same thing with the white balance. You can just click auto, see if you like it like that. And then if you don't, go back to as shot. I'm just going to leave it right here for now. Now what I like to do with the bubbles is knock up clarify a little bit. The contrast and the blacks I like to pump up uh, significantly. The recovery depends. Sometimes it works. In this case, I'm probably going to have it up all the way. And sometimes if you move the blacks way up and then also the fill light up, um, you can get a pretty wild effect. Yeah, you can also pump up the vibrance and the saturation. Yep, that looks good. Uh, another thing you could do is zoom into 100%, go to the sharpest area, and bring up the sharpness. Uh, I brought up the amount to 150, the radius up all the way, and also you can mess with the detail and just bring it up right about here. And the luminance noise, you can also pump that up quite a bit. Um, this is good enough though. I mean, we can now open it and here we go. It's right here. What I like to do right away when it's just in JPEG mode is just click auto contrast. That usually fixes stuff, but in this case, this picture was already good, so it didn't really do anything. So you can see now it has a lot of detail in there. And you can see that it is blurry up at the top because the depth of field that I was using on my lens is not, it's never that good in macro. So that's just a problem that's going to, you're going to come into, especially when photographing the bubbles. But I'm thinking that looks pretty sweet. So now we can save it as a JPEG and that's all there is to it.